The Crocodile Paradox A crocodile steals your child and says, I'll return them if you guess correctly whether I will or won't. You say, you won't return them. Now the crocodile is stuck. If he does return the child, your guess was wrong, but you get your child back. If he doesn't, your guess was right, and he's supposed to return the child. No matter what he does, he breaks his own rule. The Unexpected Hanging Paradox You're told by a judge, you'll be hanged next week, but the day will be a surprise. Naturally, you start thinking, it can't be Friday. If you're still alive by Thursday night, you'll know it's coming. So Friday's out. But that means Thursday is now predictable too. One by one, you eliminate every day of the week, convinced the hanging can't happen at all. Then Wednesday rolls around. A guard shows up. Turns out, overthinking the surprise only made it work better. The Two Envelope Paradox You're handed two envelopes. One has twice the money as the other. You pick one, but then you think, what if I switch? The odds seem better, so you switch. But wait, now the same logic tells you to switch again, and again, and again. No matter what, switching always seems smarter. But if that's true, you'd never stop. The paradox is, the math tricks you into thinking there's always a better option, when you're really just running in circles. The Potato Paradox You have 100 pounds of potatoes that are 99% water by weight. You leave them to dry, and now they're 98% water. How much do they weigh now? Most people guess around 98 pounds. The real answer? Just 50 pounds. Why? Because the non-water part stays the same one pound of solid potato, but now it makes up 2% of the total. The paradox? Dropping just 1% of water somehow cuts the total weight in half. It completely breaks your intuition about percentages. The Prisoner's Dilemma Two criminals are caught. Each can either stay silent or betray the other. If both stay silent, light sentences. If one talks and the other doesn't, the snitch walks free, the other gets slammed. If both snitch, both get medium time. The smart move individually is to betray, but if both do that, they're worse off than if they'd stayed silent. The paradox? Acting in your own self-interest can lead to a worse outcome for everyone involved, including you. The Paradox of the Court, Protagora's Paradox A law teacher trains a student for free, under one condition. The student will pay him only after winning his first case. After finishing school, the student doesn't take any cases, so the teacher sues him to get paid. Now here's the twist. The teacher says, if I win this case, the court says you owe me. If I lose, you've won a case, so you owe me. But the student flips it. If I lose, I haven't won a case yet, so I don't owe you. If I win, the court says I don't have to pay. The Two-Child Paradox A family has two children the older and the younger. You're told that one of them is a boy, but you're not told which one. What are the odds that both are boys? Most people say 50-50, but the actual answer is one in three. Here's why. The possible combinations are boy-boy, boy-girl, girl-boy, and girl-girl. Girl-girl is out since we know there's at least one boy. That leaves three options, and only one of them has two boys. It's a simple setup with a surprisingly tricky outcome. The Sleeping Beauty Paradox You're part of a weird sleep experiment. On Sunday, you're put to sleep. Then they flip a coin. If it's heads, they wake you up on Monday, ask you one question, and that's it. If it's tails, they wake you up on Monday, ask the same question, erase your memory, and then wake you up again on Tuesday to ask the exact same question. Like Monday never happened. Here's the catch. Each time you wake up, you don't know what day it is, or if you've already been woken up. So now they ask, what do you think the coin landed on? Your gut says it's 50-50, right? But think about it. If the coin was heads, you'd only wake up once. If it was tails, you'd wake up twice. And since you have no way to tell which wake up you're in, there's a higher chance you're in one of the tails wake ups. So even though the coin is fair, it feels like tails is more likely because it gives more chances to experience waking up. The Teletransportation Paradox You step into a teleport machine scans your body, destroys it, and rebuilds you atom by atom somewhere else. Looks like you, talks like you, has your memories, but did you survive 
or were you replaced by a perfect copy? If the original was destroyed, maybe you're dead and no one noticed. The paradox is this. If your body and mind can be recreated, is you just information or something deeper we can't copy? The Ship of Theseus A ship is kept in a museum. Over time, every piece of wood is replaced. Eventually, none of the original parts remain. So, is it still the same ship? Now imagine all of the old parts are reassembled into a new ship. Which one is the real ship of Theseus? The one with new parts or the one with the old ones? The paradox asks, what actually makes something the same over time? Its parts or its identity? What do you think? The simulation hypothesis. The argument is this. If advanced civilizations exist, they could run billions of simulations of people like us. So statistically, it's more likely that we're one of the simulated minds, not the original, real ones. The paradox? If we are in a simulation, how would we ever know? All your memories, senses, and thoughts could be fake, and you'd have no way to tell. And if we aren't in a simulation, we still can't prove it. The Sorites Paradox if you have a heap of sand and remove one grain, it's still a heap. Take away another, still a heap. But if you keep going, one grain at a time, eventually you're left with just one grain. Or none. Clearly, not a heap anymore. So where exactly did it stop being a heap? No one can point to the moment. That's the paradox. It shows how vague concepts like heap, tall, or rich fall apart when you try to draw a clear line. Newcomb's Paradox you're given two boxes. Box A is transparent and has $1,000 in it. Box B is blurred. It either has one million or nothing. A super intelligent predictor has already decided what's in the boxes based on what you were going to do. If it predicted you'd take both boxes, it left box B empty. If it predicted you'd only take box B, it filled it with a million dollars. Now it's your turn to choose. Take both and you get $1,000 because it saw that coming. Take only box B and you might get the million. The paradox is this. Logic says always take both. More money guaranteed. But people who take only box B tend to win big. So what do you trust more, your free will or the predictor's track record? The Preface Paradox An author writes a book believing everything in it is true. But in the preface, he admits, I probably got something wrong. Both statements seem reasonable until you realize they contradict each other. You can't fully believe every chapter and also think one of them is false. It's a paradox of honesty. We trust our knowledge while also admitting we're not perfect, which makes you wonder how much of what you know is just a confident guess. The Bootstrap Paradox you travel back in time with a copy of Hamlet and hand it to Shakespeare. He publishes it, becomes famous, and the play survives for centuries. Hundreds of years later, you are born, read Hamlet in school, and eventually find that same old copy. Then you take it back in time and give it to Shakespeare, completing the loop. But here's the problem. No one ever actually wrote it. Shakespeare didn't create it. You gave it to him. But you only knew it because he published it. The play came from nowhere. That's the paradox. A thing exists with no true origin. The Raven Paradox All ravens are black. So, if you see a black raven, that supports the claim. But here's the twist. Logically, so does seeing a green apple. Why? Because it's something that's not black and not a raven, which technically supports the idea that all non-black things aren't ravens. So according to formal logic, your apple confirms something about birds you didn't even see. The paradox shows how following logic to the letter can give you evidence that feels completely useless. And that's where common sense and logic part ways. The Omnipotence Paradox Can God create a rock so heavy that even he can't lift it? If yes, then he's not all-powerful, because now there's something he can't do. But if the answer is no, then he's still not all powerful because he couldn't create the rock in the first place. Either way, there's a limit. The same logic applies to questions like, can God build a prison he can't escape from? These puzzles reveal the deeper issue. Maybe the idea of unlimited power just breaks when pushed too far. The Liar Paradox This sentence is false. 
That's it. One line that breaks logic. If it's true, then what it says must be true, so it's false. But if it's false, then what it says isn't true, which means it is true. It keeps flipping back and forth forever. The Paradox of Tolerance If a society is totally tolerant, it must also tolerate intolerance. But if it does, the intolerant will slowly take over and intolerance altogether. So to stay tolerant, you actually have to draw a line and not tolerate certain things. The paradox is simple. Being 100% tolerant can destroy tolerance itself. The Paradox of Inquiry, Minnow's Paradox How did you learn something completely unknown? If you know what you're looking for, you don't need to ask. But if you don't know what you're looking for, how would you even recognize the answer when you find it? Either way, it feels like learning is impossible. But that's the trick. The point isn't to say learning doesn't happen. It's to challenge how we think it works. We assume we go from total ignorance to full understanding. But that's not how it really goes. We usually start with a rough idea, something half-formed, and slowly connect the dots. The paradox reminds us, Learning isn't about downloading new facts. It's about re-seeing what we already half knew. The Grelling-Nelson Paradox Some adjectives describe themselves. Short is a short word. English is an English word. These are autological words. Others don't describe themselves. Long is not a long word. German is not a German word. These are heterological. Now here's the trap. Is the word heterological heterological? If yes, it doesn't describe itself. But that means it is heterological, which means it does describe itself. If no, it does describe itself, but that means it's autological and it's not supposed to describe itself. No matter what you pick, it contradicts itself. That's the paradox. A word that breaks logic just by trying to define itself. The self-reference paradox. Imagine a sentence that talks about itself. Now imagine a sentence that says, This sentence refers to itself, referring to itself, referring to itself. And on it goes, forever. It never actually tells you anything. It just keeps folding back into itself. The paradox isn't that it's false. It's that it traps your brain into an endless loop where you keep looking for meaning that never shows up. It's a sentence that exists only to talk about itself, and that's what breaks it. The Friendship Paradox Most people feel like their friends are more popular than they are. Weird, right? But the math says it's true. Here's why. People with lots of friends appear on more people's friends lists, so they get counted more often when you take the average. That pulls the average number of friends up, even though most people are closer to the bottom. The Lottery Paradox you're looking at a million lottery tickets. You know only one can win. So you look at ticket number one and say, it probably won't win, that's reasonable. Then ticket number two, same logic. Go through the whole stack and you're justified in saying each ticket will lose. But put all those beliefs together and you've just concluded that no ticket will win, which you know is false. That's the paradox. You can be rational about each individual belief, but when you add them up, they contradict reality. Zeno's Achilles and the Tortoise Achilles challenges a slow-moving tortoise to a race and gives it a head start. Zeno argues that Achilles can never catch the tortoise, because first, Achilles has to reach the point where the tortoise started. But by that time, the tortoise has moved a little further. Now, Achilles has to reach that new point. But the tortoise has moved again. No matter how fast Achilles runs, there will always be another tiny distance to cover. Zeno's logic slices motion into an infinite number of steps. And even though each step is smaller, there are infinitely many. So Achilles can never truly finish catching up. The paradox? It uses infinity to argue that motion is impossible, even though we clearly see people overtake each other in real life. It's not about running. It's about how our brains struggle with infinite division. The Arrow Paradox Zeno again. This time, he says motion is impossible for a flying arrow. Why? Because at any single instant, the arrow isn't moving. It's frozen in place. And time is made up of instants, right? 
So if the arrow is motionless at every moment, how does it move at all? The paradox shows how slicing time into moments makes motion disappear, even though we clearly see things move in the real world. The Uncertainty Principle In quantum physics, you can't precisely measure both a particle's position and its speed at the same time. The more accurately you know where it is, the less you can know how fast it's moving. And the more you know its speed, the fuzzier its location becomes. This isn't because of bad instruments, it's a fundamental rule of nature. Particles don't have exact positions and speeds at the same time. The paradox? At the smallest scale, reality itself becomes blurry, just by trying to look at it too closely. To learn the psychological traps that make you fall for stupid decisions, watch this video. Thanks for watching.